Okay, so today we are going to be making pizza. So I'm going to ask, and I'll remind everybody as we go through, uh, leave your mic off unless you have a question, and then leave your video off um, because otherwise you're going to show up on the recording and you may not want to do that. But let's start with our ingredients. So first, we need a package of yeast. So let's talk about that for a second. There are two kinds of yeast. There's this yeast, and then there's this yeast. So the second yeast has is pizza crust making yeast, and we don't have to wait for it to hydrate. And if you look at the back of the directions of the yeast, the directions for this yeast, which is just regular old yeast, will tell you that you have to hydrate it first. So if you're using this, you have to follow the directions for this first before you add it into the dough. This one, we can just add it right in, and we don't need to do anything else. Also, the recipe is a little bit different for regular yeast. Um, it reduces the amount of water you use, but um, I can post directions for regular yeast in the assignment later. All right, so let's get started. So first we have our ingredients. We have our yeast. We have one tablespoon of white sugar. We have one cup of warm water. So that's going to be for the yeast. We have two and a half cups of bread flour, two tablespoons of olive oil, and one teaspoon of salt. Now what I've done is I've doubled the entire recipe because what I wanna do is I wanna make pizza crust for the freezer or for the refrigerator, and I'm gonna make them all little ones so everyone can have their own pizza, but then I can store it in the freezer and we can have pizza all week long. Um, a lot of times people will cook the pizza all in one shot, make the crust and make the pizza, but I find at dinner time, sometimes it's a little slow trying to make the pizza crust at the same time as trying to make pizzas. So we're gonna do this a little bit differently so that way we can get everybody to make the pizzas all at the same time without having to make the pizza crust. Now, if you're wondering what that big loud sound in the background is, that is my oven. It has a terrible, terrible sound with the fan, so we're gonna have to deal with it. I will talk loud so I can talk over it. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take my screen share and stop the screen share so that way you guys can see the process in the kitchen, but I'm gonna just show my directions real quick. Put that up. There we go, here's our directions. So first, we need to preheat the oven. So you wanna do that before you start doing anything to 450 degrees before you start um, making your dough. Then you wanna get all your ingredients measured out while your oven's heating up. Put everything in bowls, ready to just dump stuff in. Then um, you're gonna take your steps and follow your steps one at a time. So let's go through the steps. So in a little bowl, we're gonna take the yeast and dissolve the yeast and sugar in the warm water. And we're gonna let it stand for about 10 minutes until it kind of gets creamy. Then we're gonna stir in the flour, salt, and oil, and beat until smooth. So that means we're gonna kind of mix it up with a fork or a mixer. mixer can be done with this. I just use a fork, it's just as easy. Finally, we're gonna turn the dough out into, um, onto a surface and roll it out until it's round. And then when we're ready to cook the crust, we're gonna put it onto a lightly greased pizza pan or baker's peel. So a baker's peel looks like this. That's a baker's peel. So instead of using a pizza pan, I'm gonna use a baker's peel and I'm gonna put some cornmeal on top so that way I can do lots of crusts and I don't have to worry about having to have a whole bunch of different pans to cook the crust in. Now the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a pizza stone. So that's in the oven heating up. So when it comes time to put the pizza on, I'm gonna slide the pizza dough onto the pizza stone and let the pizza crust cook. And it says let it cook for about 15 to 20 minutes. I'm only gonna let it cook for like 10 because I want it to just be cooked enough that I can 
take it out and put it in the refrigerator and save it for later for dinner tonight or for dinner, lunch, or snacks tomorrow. So we'll cook it a little bit and then we'll take it out and then put the next one in. I'm also gonna make them a little bit smaller than a regular pizza because if you can see my pizza peel, it's not huge. So I don't wanna make something that's not gonna fit on this because when I go to take it in and out, I wanna make sure I can get this underneath the whole pizza. So if you don't have one of these, I recommend just using a regular baking pan. So that way you can put it on the baking pan and then take it out and then just let it cool. Because getting it off out of the oven is pretty tricky if you don't have a pizza peel to do it. So do it on the baking sheet and let the baking sheet do the work for you. Just have an adult take it out of the oven and sit on the counter and let it cool off. And then that way you could do it with the ingredients on it and make the pizza all at once. Or if you want, you can cook the crust, take it out of the oven, let it cool down. And then when it's all cool, you could take it off the sheet pan and then pack it into the oven, okay? So I'm going to switch my screen so I can see the whole video. So now I got the full screen video. Let's make this so it is speaker view. Uh, can everyone just shut off their video so that way we can just have, Noah, could you set, shut off your video so that way we can just have my video on the screen? Awesome, perfect. So now we're gonna go through the process of mixing everything together. So first, I have my five cups of flour, and I have my oil, and I have my warm water, and I have my yeast. So I want to do my measuring cup, and I'm going to measure out two cups of water because I'm doubling everything. It said one cup, so we're going to do two cups. And then my sugar, which is right here in a bowl. And I, again, I doubled that instead of one teaspoon, I'm doing two teaspoons of sugar. So I'm gonna pour that in, we're gonna pour that in. Put it in into the water. Okay, and now I'm gonna get my yeast, which is the pizza yeast, right? So we're gonna cut that open. I got scissors. I'm going to cut them apart because there's two of them. Actually, we probably just do it from either side. That's okay. So here's the first one. Cut this open. Upper. We're going to pour all that in there. Come on, pour it on. Awesome. So it looks like these little brown pellets. It kind of looks like um, pizza dough. It kind of looks like pizza dough, right? Okay, so there's one. And they kind of float on top. So we're going to have to mix it up a little bit. Otherwise, it'll never mix together. So you can see some of it's floating down already. So the reason why we put the sugar in it is because the yeast is alive. Yep. The yeast is alive, and we are going to feed it so it can come back to life. It's actually in hibernation. And what it does is it allows our crust, pizza crust to rise. Otherwise, our pizza crust would end up just being really, really flat and dense and really gross. So I'm going to take my fork, mix this up a little bit. 
and then let my helper continue to mix. So do this nice and slow. Keep mixing nice and slow. Okay, so now we have to let this sit for 10 minutes. So I'm going to pause our video recording so we're not watching me for 10 minutes, and then we'll come back when it is done. So hang on. Well, it has been 10 minutes and you can see our yeast has turned all nice and creamy. So now the next step is kind of messy. So the first thing we want to do, we want to wash our hands. Because we're going to be digging our hands in the food. Oh, nice and clean. Okay, next up. So I have my flour. Remember, I doubled the recipe. So if we take two and a half cups and we double it, that's five cups. So I have five cups of flour here. And then I took my yeast, and instead of having just one cup of water, I doubled it. So that's two cups of water. And then I have my olive oil, and instead of having, can't tilt this that much, but there it is. Instead of having two tablespoons, I'm gonna have four. So would you like to pour the olive oil in? Just enough, try to get it all in there. You can use your finger to push the rest of the olive oil in if you need to, or if you're measuring it out as you go, you could just use the, the tablespoon measure as you go. I pre-measured everything, it makes it a little bit easier. So I got my olive oil in there. And since my fingers are gonna get messy anyway, it's okay. I dish the sink. Next, I'm gonna take my yeast and my water. And put it in. And now we're gonna take a big fork and start mixing it around. Okay. We do it just make, do it nice and slow. Yeah. Okay. Now the other thing I need is salt. The recipe calls for one teaspoon. I'm going to do two teaspoons. I probably should have added this first because you always want to mix your dry and your wet, but I don't think it's going to matter that much. Dry first and wet. Yeah, always dry first and wet, but I don't think it's going to matter that much. It's just pizza crust, so right? It's just yeah. cooking. We want to make sure we get all of the powder mixed in, and the whole thing is going to become a, like a big, sticky ball. So I'm mixing that all in. See how the, it's starting to get all incorporated? Let's see? It's all mixing in. Still a lot of flour. To mix in, yeah, get that all mixed in. And while she's mixing that in, I'm going to show you something with the measuring cup. When you're measuring your flour, one of the important things is when you scoop the flour up, you want to take a knife or something and scrape off the excess. So that way you have one full cup of flour. Otherwise, you'll have like a mound of flour and then you're not really measuring right. So you want to make sure that you are measuring and then Scraping off the top. Okay, let's mix that in. Let me help you a little bit. Get that mixed in a little bit more. Now, once we're done getting this all incorporated and mixed in, it does take some work. It does start to become sticky and it's difficult to get all the flour mixed in, but we really want to try to get everything mixed in. Resist the urge to add more water. Do not do that. Now, at some point, you might want to switch to your hands because it's just easier to get it mixed in with your hands than it is to get it mixed in with the fork. And that way, you can kind of find the wet spots. 
Um, if you want, you see how my hands are getting all gooey. One of the things you can do to keep that from happening is add some flour to your hands before you start, which is what I probably should have done, but I forgot. What happens when you do live TV? So normally, if you use regular yeast, at this point, you have to let it sit for like a half hour to let it rise. Pizza yeast is a little different. I only have to let this sit for like five minutes and then we're good to go. So that's why pizza yeast is a little bit better than regular yeast, but it's really not different in the ingredients. You still have to use the water. All the ingredients are the same. It's just the amount of time you have to wait for the dough to rise before you end up making your dough. So I'm gonna let this sit. Um, can everybody do me a favor, turn off your video, so that way you just have me on the video screen. Everybody turn off their videos. One more, turn off your video. And take a scoop. And just put a little bit on my hands. This out of ways. See? We'll put a little bit on my hands, rub it together. So at the same time, I'm doing this over this glass dish. So that way I have a place to knead the dough and start making the pizza crust. Mm -hmm. So go ahead, put your hands over. Rub it together. Let the excess dough fall down. Perfect. Okay. So now we're going to take the whole package of dough here, take the whole thing out, all sticky, and then we're going to knead it. So with kneading it is like this. You push it flat, you fold it over, you push it flat, and then you fold it over another direction. And we're going to keep doing that until we kind of break down some of the glutens in the pizza crust. So it takes a couple times. You want to be pretty aggressive. If you want good pizza crust, you have to knead it. So yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Turn it over. Push it down. <laughs> Smush it. Now turn it. You gotta go. Wait, you gotta go this way. Open this half this way. Okay, then I'll turn the top down. Push it down. Push it down. Push it. Let <laughs> me help. Squish, 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 squish. Squish, squish, squish. Squish it all down. Okay, fold it over this way. Okay, squish. It's coming off the sheet. Oh, okay, so we're moving the window. Okay, squish. Good. So let's keep going. Squish, squish, squish. Really trying to make all those bonds of gluten break down. Otherwise our pizza crust won't be very good. Now at this point, if I make pizza out of this, this would be one huge pizza crust, which definitely is not what we want. Now we can see it's starting to get a little sticky. So I can just take a little bit more flour and put it onto the board. And then that way it won't get sticky. So you kind of have to catch it before it gets too sticky. Otherwise your hands get to be a mess. Okay, so next step. What we're gonna do is we're gonna cut up our dough into pieces. So I'm gonna divide it up. I think if I divide it up into eight pieces, that'll be pretty good. So I'm gonna just cut it. You can cut it with a regular knife. It cut pretty easily. So I cut it in half. That's two. And then I'm gonna cut each of those in half. That gives me four. And then I'm going to cut each of those in half. And that will be eight. Cool. Show everybody our eight pieces, okay? Give me a second. Just Go ahead. Show everybody our eight pieces. Okay, now, next, I'm going to take each of these little eight pieces and put them into a little ball. Yeah. And then we're going to just lay them into the bowl. Okay. 
so we can come back for them and cook them. Now remember the directions in this one, as we said, we're going to just make the crust. But if you wanted to, at this point, you could actually make the pizza, put all the toppings on it, and put in the oven. But since we're going to do this for dinner for later, um, just put them all in. It's fine. Just don't press them down too hard. Okay, and I'm going to leave one here, like that. No, we're going to leave that one there. Well, you can make it into a ball. Okay, make it into a little ball. Okay. Now I'm going to take my pizza peel. So, move this out of the way. Where do I put the Now, if you're using a pizza peel, you want to put cornmeal down on the pizza peel first. If you're using a baking dish, you're going to put some kind of olive oil or spray oil, spray pan on top of the pizza crust, pizza tray. If you don't do that, the pizza crust is going to stick. If you're doing it on a pizza tray, you can make the whole pizza at once and put it in the oven, or you can just cook the crust and then take it out of the oven and let the whole thing cool before you try to take the pizza out of the tray. We're going to do it a little bit differently. I have a pizza stone and a pizza peel. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to put a little bit of cornmeal onto the pizza peel. And then we're going to take our ball and I'm going to start with my hands and I'm going to start pulling it apart and making a circle. And what you do is you want to pull a little bit and just keep going around and around trying to get a circle. Now doesn't that be a perfect circle? The pizza guys are so much better at this than I am. And if you let the weight of the pizza do it a little bit, it kind of pulls itself. Now you don't want the crust super, super thick, unless you want super, super thick crust. I don't think we want that. We want a little bit thinner. So we're going to keep pulling it and trying to get it thinner and thinner. It doesn't have to cover the whole thing. It should cover a good portion of it. Now if you get a hole in it, that's okay. You can always push the whole pieces back together to make the crust. Now you can see I can start to get much bigger. I want to really work on these ends here. The middle's getting a little thinner, so I might want to sit it down now on the piece of peel and just pull the ends out a little bit. Well, we're going to cook the crust and the crust itself will rise up a little bit. And then at this point, if you wanted to, you could put all the ingredients on your pizza and be ready to go. But we're not going to do that. We're just going to cook the crust for like 10 minutes. Yeah, I think I have a nice shape here. So there's my pizza crust. It is ready to go into the oven. So we're going to put the first one in. Sorry, my oven's a little smoky. Somebody cooked something now. I want to put some cornmeal on the pizza stone in the oven, again for the same reason, so it doesn't stick. Oh, hang on, hang on. Didn't slide off as easily as I wanted it to. Okay, maybe I'm just going to try to flop it on. Okay. Maybe not. Oh, it's still sticking. There we go. I think we're going to have to live with that. Okay, okay first one in. Hopefully it didn't die. Oh, it kind of really came off, didn't it? Oh, oh, There we go. Now it's on. I don't want to be in the house in there. Okay. First one's going to cook. We're going to let it cook for about 10 minutes. I'm going to pause the video and be right back.
So I am signing off from the video chat and we will see you all tomorrow when we're on doing something else.